Hi, I'm Ray with the Volusia County Public Library, and today we're going to be making a gluten-free cookie bar called a Carmelita. They're really great. Uh, they use gluten-free oats, uh, gluten-free flour. Uh, the one thing I would suggest is it's very important that when you're buying oats that you double check to make sure that they're certified gluten-free. Sometimes there's some cross-contamination and if you have someone that is really sensitive to wheat gluten, sometimes that wheat gluten will get on the oats. So always double check that package before you start. And today I'm gonna to walk you through that process. I've gathered all of my ingredients here uh, and we're gonna be making the crust first. So the one thing that you're gonna to wanna to start with is your cup for cup uh, gluten-free flour mix. This is one and one quarter cup of gluten-free flour mix. So we're going to pour that into our mixing bowl. We are going to use one and one quarter cup of gluten-free rolled oats into the mixing bowl. Those are going to go. And then you're going to want to have one and one half stick or three quarters of a cup of melted butter. And if you do this in a separate bowl, uh, you're going to melt it and cool it. And then the suggestion that I make is you add your one cup of brown sugar into your melted butter. So it gives you a chance to combine that in an easier format. And then just kind of whisk it together to break up any big clumps and kind of help dissolve the sugar a little bit. So once that is mixed together, you're going to add the butter and sugar mixture into your oat mixture. And you're going to stir this oat, flour, sugar, butter mixture together until it comes together. So as that has come together, it's formed kind of a, a loose looking crumble, which is what we want. And then you're gonna add your final two ingredients one quarter teaspoon of salt. I just sprinkle that over the top. And then you're gonna add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And then you're gonna give it one final stir. That's what it looks like when it's been stirred together. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your eight by eight uh, baking pan that you're gonna make these in and you're going to want to get a couple pieces of foil and make a sling. So you set one foil. So one piece of foil this way, the second piece of foil the other way. Sure you push it all the way out into the corners and then you're going to take your baking spray non-stick cooking spray and spray the bottom of that and what we're going to do is now take one half of this mixture over here into the pan nice even layer on the bottom You take your spatula and really press it down. You want it to be even all the way across so it bakes evenly. When you're done, it's gonna look like this. And you're gonna to wanna to put that into a 350 degree oven and you're gonna bake it for about 10 minutes. It's just gonna to start to come together, maybe get a little bit dry, maybe whispers of brown on it. After 10 minutes, you're gonna pull it out and you're gonna let it cool. So while that crust is cooling, we can move on to making our filling. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is unwrap 35 of the individually wrapped caramels. Uh, your favorite brand, doesn't matter. Uh, 35 of them though, and you're going to add to that one half cup of heavy cream into that bowl. And you're gonna to wanna to put this into the microwave and you're gonna melt the caramels and mix it in with the heavy cream. And what I suggest that you do is you microwave this in about 45 second to one minute bursts. So put it into the microwave, microwave it for that 45 seconds, that 60 seconds, 
pull it out, stir it, put it back in. You don't want your caramel to burn, you don't want it to boil over. So the caramel and cream mixture has been microwaved in 45 second bursts. And it took me about five minutes to do this. I would take it out and stir it after every time. And as you can see, they have come together. There's a little bit of uh, caramel that's kind of unmelted, but the giant squares are gone. And so while that crust is still cooling, you can continue to stir this and it will come right together. So the next step is over this cooled crust, you're going to want to spread about eight ounces of chocolate chips in an even layer. And you just kind of eyeball this. That looks pretty good. And then you're going to want to take your caramel sauce that's cooled off a little bit, and you're going to drizzle that over the chocolate chips. So you've got a nice even layer of chocolate chips, an even layer of caramel. And your last step is to take that other half of the uh, mixture that you made for the crust and we're going to put that over the top in an even layer. Just kind of take globs of it and sprinkle it over the top. And then just pat it down. And then this is going to go back into that 350 degree oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. So the caramelita is baked for 15 minutes in that 350 degree oven. We've pulled it out of the oven. We've unwrapped the edges of our foil sling and lifted them out of that baking pan. And what you want to do is have these cool and it's going to take about four hours because remember there's chocolate, there's caramel in there that gets really, really hot. And after four hours, it'll start to firm back up to where you can cut it. But if you're like me, you're a little bit impatient, you wanna try it and see how good it is, I'm gonna give just a little taste. Mm. It's a great mix of caramel, chocolate, the strudel top with the gluten-free oats, gluten-free flour. So if you've got friends or family, or if you suffer from gluten allergies, perfect cookie. If you want more information about gluten-free baking, gluten-free cooking, come in and check out any of our books that we have at our branches of the Volusia County Public Library. If you've enjoyed this video, we encourage you to watch more of our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.